Hey everyone, Fusemen coming at ya. And today, Hassan, who you might have seen in some past live streams, is going to lead this cool video on how to use WebVR and ApeFrame to build an experience for the Vive. And I think WebVR is this really cool technology that's still super early, but potentially has a lot of promise, but I think there are a couple of problems. One is the performance, and the other is just making sure it's intuitive to develop for. Uh, I don't necessarily know if HTML is the right way, but maybe there will be some cool, more user-friendly interfaces that you can actually build experiences with. So hopefully this video will help you get started if you want to join that community and help maybe tackle some of those problems. But yeah, that's pretty much this. Uh, the other thing I want to mention really quick is we only noticed after the fact that Hassan was actually recording with his Vive mic. So apologies on the audio quality, but I still think there's some really good content in here that I hope you guys enjoy. Hello everyone and happy holidays. In this short video, we're going to be showing you a basic introduction to WebVR and a by the end of the video, you're going to have a website that allows you to upload any photos here so that you can use your HMD to look around that photo sphere. Um, if you were here right now and you could put the Vive on, you would see all of the different details of this image just by looking around. Um, again, the way that we're making this possible is by using WebVR and A-Frame. If you've never heard of it, A-Frame is just a framework for WebVR. And WebVR is the general concept of being able to browse virtual reality using the power of the internet. Now, if you want to follow along and actually implement what we're going to be using in this tutorial, you need to do two things first. First of all, go to the Mozilla VR website, click on Getting Started, and follow the steps related to any headset that you want to be using. I'm going to be using the Vive, and I'm going to be using Firefox Nightly. So I went through these steps. Um, but you can also use Chromium, which is Google Chrome's experimental web VR browser. Uh, Firefox Nightly is Firefox's web VR browser. Um, those both work for the Rift, and there's also steps for mobile. So get that done if you want to be able to try out web VR. The last bit of setup you need to do if you want to complete this tutorial is go to NeoCities and sign up for a free website. We'll be using this to host the virtual reality experience that we create. Once you're all ready to go, sign into NeoCities and you'll probably see something like this. Go to the top right, click on your username, and click on Edit Site. Here you'll see a dashboard with all of the files for the site that you're creating. Um, you might see some extra stuff in here that you don't have, for example, these images, but don't worry about those. We'll be adding them later as we make more of our VR experience. For now, just open up your index.html. This is what's going to serve up the VR website that you create. So you'll have something like this to start off. Um, just go ahead and delete that. That represents a basic starter website. Um, so you could use it if you want to jump into web development, but we're not going to be using any of that today. Instead, let's go over to A-Frame. So not the posters or signs. What we want is the apron that says make web VR. And we can go to hello world. We can make a basic example like this just to get us started. So let's click on view source. We see that it's actually relatively straightforward. So let's go ahead and copy all of this over. Um, and this is from, it looks like, M. Klanga and NGO Kevin, uh, who I know are both uh, people that are very into web VR development. I've seen lots of examples from them around. And I'm pretty sure that they have other examples on the internet. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's paste it into our index.html. And I'll give you an overview of how this whole uh, file structure is set up in case you haven't done any web development. So for starters, we have our head section. This is where we define the title of our website, the character set that we're using, and also metadata um, that might be helpful for search engines and things along those lines. Um, we also import libraries. So CSS is used to style websites, and JavaScript is used to add animation. We're going to actually be using JavaScript to make everything VR compatible. So one thing that we need to change is this script tag. 
and specifically this source item. We need to give this a link to the current version of A-Frame JavaScript. So let's go back to A-Frame and find that. Let's go to get started. Uh, it should be listed somewhere here. All right, here we go. Production version of A-Frame Minified. So we can copy this. Um, an alternative is that you can actually download it onto your computer and create a package that you're putting on the internet. Um, but just copying the link is a lot easier for now. So let's actually replace all of this script tag with that. So the next part of this HTML page is the body. The body is where we put all of the contents of what we're creating. You can think about this like a Unity scene. In fact, A-Frame actually uses a structure that's very sim similar to Unity scenes. It's called an entity component system. So we have our scene, which is like a Unity scene, and then within that we have different components. So for example, we have a, an A-sphere, a box, a cylinder, a plane, a sky, and an entity. You can think of all of these sort of like game objects in Unity. They're just different things that we're adding to our scene, and we can also compose them together, sort of like adding components to a game object, to make something that's really interesting. We can make explosions, animations, and much more. So now that we have all of this, we're actually ready to get started. Um, just be sure to give it a look over, um, try to make a little bit of sense out of it. And if you want to learn more about any of these components or other components, you can go onto this A-Frame website, and there's a bunch of a description about how they all work. You can also get an overview of what the entity component system actually is, if you're interested in learning more about that. So now let's actually see this demo web VR scene that we've created. Once you've added in all of this, just hit save on NeoCities and hit view. Now you can click and drag to look around this scene. And you can also hit this cardboard button. And now if you have your headset set up, you can look around in this scene that you've created. So that's pretty awesome. And just a few minutes in, and we've already created a WebVR scene. That's the promise of WebVR. It's easy to build, and it's viewable by anyone who has a headset and this website. Um, now, you can also make adjustments to this scene if you'd like. So um, as you can see, we have a sphere, a box, a cylinder, and a plane. Um, that's what we have right here. So the sphere, the box, cylinder, plane. And I mean, you can easily take one of these out, save our scene, click view again, and now once this finally pops up, we'll see the same scene, but without a box this time. Yep, no box. And now once we're able to hit this Google VR-esque type button, we can jump into seeing this new scene. So again, you can go through tons of configurations if you want. Um, you can change the different details that are on these. You can change the positions, the radius, the color, and so on. Uh, you could even go more in depth and start to try to write some of your own components. If you're interested in any of this stuff, just let Fuseman and I know, and we can lead more videos or streams. So now let's get to the final part of the tutorial and what you came here for which is how can we put a photosphere onto the web so that we can view it in VR? Well, for starters, we're not going to need a lot of the stuff that we currently have in our A-frame scene. So let's get rid of the sphere, cylinder, and plane. Uh, we can also get rid of the camera component. Um, when you don't add a camera component manually into an A scene for A-frame, uh, you actually get one by default. The only reason to add a camera is if you want to position it so here they're using a specific position, but we won't need that. All that we're going to be changing is actually this A sky component. We're going to be changing its attributes so that we can get it to show a picture instead of a color. So the way that we do that is we can actually get rid of this color component in it and actually put in something that says source. And then we need to give it a link to the image that we want it to be this photosphere. So we'll need a 360-degree image to get that. 
effect. So let's go to Flickr 360 and look for one that we can use there. This is where I got the picture of the boat that I showed earlier. But if we get here, we can click on Photos and browse around um, for one of these horizontal pictures and pick one that you like. Oh, I actually really like this one. So I'm going to uh, download this. You can you can really pick any size that you want. It's best to pick a size that's a power of two um, because WebGL is going to resize the picture um, to be a power of two, but actually it can do that dynamically. It will just make the load take a little bit longer. So pick any size you want. The bigger, the better. If it's a power of two, that's also better, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, as proof of that, I'll get this um, original size, which is not a power of two. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. And now I'm going to go to my NeoCDs dashboard. So if I find that download, I'll rename this uh, Snowman. And I can just drag it into my dashboard on NeoCities, confirm that it's there. And then getting that to show up as our photos here is actually as simple as putting its name as the source right here. Uh, what we really are doing is we're putting a path, like the file path, to that image in this source attribute. Um, the thing is, is that index and snowman are actually in the same folder. So the path to it can just be represented by the name of that picture. So once we do this, we actually have everything we need to look at this photosphere in VR using the web. So let's save this. And next, hit view. You can see around the inside of the sphere using our browser. Or we can hit that cardboard S button. And now when we put on our HMD, we can see these snowmen all around us. That's pretty cool. One last piece that I want to show is how we can use A-Frame with this photosphere to create more of a mixed reality setting. I really love that this photosphere is vested and holiday themed, um, but we can also add in some generic A-Frame components just to spice it up and show the possibility for mixing reality and also some fake components that A-Frame makes possible to us. So we're just going to add in a simple box. So let's go back to our index.html and let's start creating a box component. A box, we need to specify some of its attributes. So for example, we need to specify its position. I want to give it zero and the X and Y and then make it go a little bit into the screen. So I'll give it a negative two. If you want more information on the coordinate system for A-Frame, you just go a frame position and the axis that a frame uses is actually a little bit weird the negative x axis goes to the left the positive goes to the right that's fine makes sense the negative y goes up and the positive y goes down and then the negative x goes into the screen and the positive comes out of the screen so that may be different than some coordinate systems that you're used to in the past so just specify the position that you want using this position attribute. And then after that, we can also change the color. Let's make it red for the holidays. And we can also change the height and width. So let's give those each a one. And the last thing we need to do is end this A box tag. So now if we hit save and let's close this website that we have open from before. Now if we go to view, we should see our scene pop up. Pretty cool. Looks like I got a crash report. So I'll send whatever happened on to Mozilla or whoever's watching. So you see that we have the same photos here, but now we've added in this cube. And if I put on my headset, I can see that cube down there. And in the background, I can see the real scene of this uh, snowman ornament environment. I actually kind of wish that I could live inside. It looks really cool. Um, so that's that. Um, one thing that I'm surprised about is that not as many bugs as I thought would pop up during this tutorial actually did. Um, but that's really what I want to conclude with. 
um, giving you some excitement about WebVR, but also a little bit of a word of warning. As you see, WebVR is incredibly exciting because any of you can now go to this website and experience what I just created using your own HMD. Also, give us the links to what you create so that we can check out your creations in WebVR. Um, the word of warning that I want to give, though, is that WebVR, it's sort of like the first spaceship to Mars. I mean, it's not going to be a comfy ride. There's lots of changes and lots of crazy stuff going on in the process of trying to get there. You can actually see a bug happening right now. It looks like my background image is not loading in. And a lot of this stuff is happening just because there are so many changes that are being made to A-Frame and WebVR uh, pretty much weekly. So if you ever encounter a bug like this, if something's not quite working, uh, either shoot us a message or Google it, look for some answers online because there's a very active community, but it's also a very rapidly developing space. Um, the other thing that works, uh, as cheesy as it sounds, is sometimes you just have to restart your web browser. So let me go ahead and do that just to show you. I mean, it looks like right now, actually, um, Firefox Nightly itself was crashing. <laughs> you can see the screen recording software that I'm using there. It's going on infinitely. But once we start up Firefox Nightly again, if we go to that website, it should be working fine now. Yeah, so sometimes Firefox Nightly, I mean, it just crashes and you'll need to restart or restart your computer. But as you can see, uh, we have our tutorial working. You can change the image that we put in here. You can add in your own A-frame elements. You can even start adding explosions and animations. Have fun with it. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and happy holidays. We'll see you next time.